I'm still waiting to get all of those 9.9s out of my CGC pre-screen submission, and with a box this big, maybe this is the one. Hey there, today I have a CGC unboxing video, and in this video I'm going to open up an 18 book pre-screen submission and yes, I chose the 9.8 pre-screen and not the 9.9. .9. You can't actually select that anyway, but uh, I'm having a lot of fun with the whole concept of uh, 9.8s uh, now being replaced by 9.9s and uh, that my all of my pre-screens will have some percentage of 9.9s and then I, I really don't believe that to be the case, but I think it's almost fun to get paranoid about it and I'm trying to have fun with it and not get uh, super... Uh, scared of the prospects of that happening. Uh, so I've got 18 books to get through. I am really hopeful that uh, all 18 got the 9.8. If not, if there are some rejects, I'll save those to the end and show you which books didn't make it. As always, I don't look at the grades ahead of time. I prefer to be just genuinely surprised, uh, happy, sad, etc. with a pre-screen and uh, with a box this large. Uh, it does look, obviously, that I got a number of these back in a 9.8, but I am curious to see just how many got the 9.8. Uh, none of these books were pressed. Uh, to me, what I do is if I have uh, a lot of modern books that I review when I open the orders, if for me they're 9.8 uh, on their own and it makes sense financially in terms of the potential value add, uh, I go ahead and calculate the potential value add on these books and if it makes sense to go ahead and spend the additional money, I go ahead and get these books pre-screened. There is a pre-screen fee, but that fee is only applied on the rejected books. Uh, if it, they are graded a 9.8, then it just costs me the same. And so I uh, have tried to uh, boost my own confidence so that I don't get a lot of rejected books because I think that can be expensive over time. And so over the years, I've really tried to hone my grading skills so that I get the majority of my books back in a 9.8. And so if I do end up with rejects, maybe it's only a small percentage of my submission. Uh, I have a lot of books to get through, so I do want to get to the unboxing and show you which books I decided to get a 9.8 on. And you can kind of see, I think, over time as you look at my pre-screen submissions, the types of books that I'm sending in, why I'm sending them in. Uh, I'm really trying to move away from the books that I think are a 9.8, but they don't have any value immediately. Uh, I do include some like that, but maybe they have a personal reason or some sort of personal attachment to the book. It could just be because I like the book for some reason and want to keep it in my personal collection, but for the most part, I'm looking for books where it makes good financial sense to go ahead and send these books in. Now, let me go ahead and open this up so you can see how many of my 18 books Got the 9.8 from CGC. All right, here we go. So even though it is a large return from uh, my submission, I do have some rejects, so I didn't get a perfect submission this time. Uh, 18 out of 18 is a lot to ask. Uh, so I am curious to see which books got rejected. So we'll save this to the end just to kind of see which ones didn't make it. And let's go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll cover the grade. Obviously, no reason to cover it. 9.8 on Wonder Woman 77, number one. Uh, wow, okay, right out of the gate. Uh, I remember this one specifically. I picked up this copy and it had, had a little bit of uh, just corner damage that broke color on this uh, all black back cover. Uh, but not to say I grew up watching the Wonder Woman TV show. It was probably on reruns by the time I was old enough to watch it, but definitely watched it, had that uh, crush on Linda Carter and everything. And so anytime there's uh, artwork of Wonder Woman kind of in homage or respect to uh, the Linda Carter Wonder Woman, I just kind of fall in love with it all over again. Uh, this one is tough. It's square bound as well. And... I really took a chance on this one. I think I graded this as a 9.4 or 9.6, but there was no reason to press this book because of the corner damage. So this is pretty awesome to have this in a 9.8 uh, with it being kind of an oversized, thicker book. Uh, very cool. This one's from 2015, and it's titled uh, Wonder Woman 77, but it's the Wonder Woman 
uh, special limited series. I think it's a four issue limited series and this is issue number one. So uh, great start there. Uh, happy to have that one back in a 9.8. That was the one I kind of hesitated and was wondering if I should include in the submission and obviously glad I did. Uh, here we go. This is Duke number three. This is from 2024. This is a retailer incentive and uh, absolutely love this cover art featuring Baroness. I'm all in on the new Skybound Energon universe with Transformers and G.I. Joe trying to get into it uh, just the way that I did when I first started collecting comics where G.I. Joe and Transformers were the first comic books that I picked up and read. And I think there's going to be some uh, kind of sneaky first appearances in these mini series where we're kind of setting up uh, the stage for these larger uh, G.I. Joe Transformers Energon universe crossovers. And so I'm just getting a bunch of these graded that I think are 9.8s. Uh, Duke number three. You also can't go wrong with books featuring Baroness on the cover. All right, next up is Eve number one. This is from Boom Studios. This is the Inhyuk Lee 1 in 50. And I recently won this at auction from Hip Comic, but not from Infinity Comics. It was from a different seller who had uh, different variants and ratios available at auction. And from the scan, to me, it looked like this book was a 9.8. Uh, took a chance, won the book, and then when I got it back, I did give it the 9.8 assessment and sent this in. I really like this story. Uh, I've got a number of the variants and incentives on the first issue, so I'm excited to see where this one goes. And now I have the 1 in 50 in my collection. And next one, uh, House of Slaughter, number one. Awesome, this one got a 9.8. This is the retailer incentive, and this is the homage cover to... Nice House on the Lake. I really love that story. I just uh, found out there's going to be a sequel, Nice House by the Sea, I think is what it's called. And uh, in sort of the Tinian universe, the Tinian verse, I love these kind of crossover homage covers here. Uh, House of Slaughter, number one, was massively overproduced. And I think people were jumping on the bandwagon with Something is Killing the Children and thinking I'm going to get in on a new number one. And so uh, this number one issue was heavily ordered, so some of these bigger retailer incentives, the bigger ratios, one in 50s, one in 100s, uh, they're quite common, and I was picking these up at a discount and also getting these at auction for a lot less, uh, well under ratio. Uh, this one's particularly tough because of the artwork here to get this in high grade, but uh, very cool. Happy to add that one as a 9.8 as well. Next is... Speaking of incentives, <laughs> uh, great, I, this is awesome, 9.8, uh, you might say, okay, great, another House of Slaughter incentive. This is a 1 in 500. Uh, this is the highest ratio book I own, and again, while a 1 in 500 seems crazy, uh, it's quite common to find this book uh, very easy, very affordable, but as I'm collecting House of Slaughter, uh, Something is Killing the Children, and a lot of these higher ratios that really I think maybe people aren't as interested in anymore. I'm like, I can't really pass up a, a chance to own a 1 in 500. I looked at the scan at auction. It looked good enough to go ahead and put my bid in. And if I remember right, I got it for around 20 bucks. And so I felt like even if I'm going to just hold on to the book raw, uh, I think 20 bucks for a 1 in 500 is a pretty good deal. And then certainly once I got it back and I assessed it, I thought it was a 9.8 and uh, wanted to go ahead and get it slabbed to preserve the condition on this. Uh, you never know where the slaughter verse is going to end up and uh, it could end up being a book down the road that maybe becomes a little bit more sought after because of the high ratio, but very cool. A 1 in 500 getting the 9.8 there. That's awesome. Next one is... Ultimate Spider-Man, number one. This is the 1 in 10 design cover. Uh, I was trying to uh, essentially deal with FOMO as Ultimate Spider-Man, number one, came out and was able to find a bunch of different variants of it. I was not able to track down cover A, but really thought, okay, if the story is hot, the book's hot, uh, and I'm able to find some of these other books, I was getting this for under ratio 
uh, at around like seven or eight bucks for these one in tens. I really like this Marco Cicchetto design variant, uh, the character studies, costumes and everything like that. I know design variants don't always pop in terms of value, but again, just thinking of uh, the rising tide raises all ships, I do feel like as Ultimate Spider-Man number one continues to build momentum, as does the current latest iteration of the Ultimate Universe in Marvel Comics, then it's probably worth it to pick up any books really labeled Ultimate Spider-Man. So very cool. Ultimate Spider-Man number one, getting the 9.8. That's the one in 10 design variant. All right, next up is Ultimate Spider-Man number one. This is the technically the Sad Lemon Comics edition. I did not get this from Sad Lemon Comics. I got it from Eastside Comics. And I ended up buying a 9.8 slab. I pre-ordered a 9.8 slab because I wanted to make sure that I got a copy in a 9.8, but then also ordered additional raw copies in my order. And then when I got the raw copies back, I'm like, you know what? These look great too. And went ahead and submitted one in this pre-screen. Really love this homage cover to the original Ultimate Spider-Man number one. And always love in Hyuk Lee's cover art as he was the cover artist for Eve number one. This is something I think about too. When there is a book that I am FOMOing over, a lot of times there are store exclusives of that book. I used to do this with the last run of Venom when Null was a thing and Dylan Brock became a prominent character in, in the storyline of that Venom book. I was There were lots of store exclusives and those were actually quite easy to find. They don't always have the same value as like a cover A of a first issue or first character appearance. But again, you can kind of see some of that value that it's kind of bleeding into some of these other books. And uh, this is also just a fantastic cover. Love the design of this as well. Ultimate Spider-Man number one from March 2024. Next up is Ultimate Spider-Man number one. This is the Tony Daniel variant. This is the one in 25. I remember the day that Ultimate Spider-Man number one came out and I first heard that some of the uh, books were popping, that the 1 in 25 seemed to be a book that nobody really wanted. Uh, I actually liked the cover. I thought, why not splurge? Go ahead and pick up this 1 in 25 at ratio. And then sure enough, as the day went on and certainly into the next day, uh, this was sold out everywhere along with those standard cover A and variant covers. And so this was part of that set. Uh, I bought a, uh, a small set of Ultimate Spider-Man books. So very cool, happy to grab these and get these in a 9.8. If for nothing else to just get rid of the FOMO and get rid of those feelings because I can say I do have copies of Ultimate Spider-Man. I'm still on the lookout for cover A, but I'm doing pretty well here. So I think I'll be all right. G.I. Joe, a real American hero, number 301. This is the 1 in 10, the Retailer Incentive with cover art by Brad Walker. I'm really loving these 1 in 10 ratio variants, and I specifically seek them out. You can usually find them for somewhere around $5 to $7 under ratio. Easy to find. This is a popular series, uh, and I love getting kind of the 1 in 10s for a round cover price. So getting it at a good price, getting a good deal is one thing, but then also really loving the consistency in the artwork by Brad Walker and trying to make sure that I stay on top of the one in tens and get a nice run of those from the latest G.I. Joe series from Image and Skybound. Next book is, as I mentioned, G.I. Joe, Real American Hero. This is number 305. This also is the one in 10 cover art by Brad Walker. And you can kind of see a couple of characters showing up on the cover for each of these and really think that they'll kind of display nicely together uh, doing kind of a G.I. Joe or Transformers or Energon universe wall. Uh, again, uh, Baroness on the cover, that's another go-to. Anytime you can get a G.I. Joe book with Baroness uh, cover art, I think you're in good shape. Next is Superman number nine, all right. Uh, this one I was chasing as well. This is cover art by Nathan Zerdy. This was a, a book that popped on release day. Also a particularly tough book to get in high grade because of the black and white cover art here. Also a one in 25 retailer incentive. 
And I really struggled with like pre-ordering a lot of retailer incentives. This was one that I was glad that I pre-ordered and certainly glad that I sent in with the submission to get the 9.8 on it. Next is Phoenix Resurrection, The Return of Jean Grey, number one. This is the Art Germ variant cover. And while I do collect all things Art Germ, the, there is a full art variant of the same book that I would like to acquire, but I didn't have this one and ended up winning this, I think in the same auction as I did the House of Slaughter books and the Eve book. And I didn't pay very much to, to get this. And I knew that uh, if I could get it in a 9.8 and get it graded, because it's an art germ cover, these are always going to have some sort of value attached to it. And now this will be a reminder for me to be on the lookout for the full art version. Next is Captain Marvel number five. All right. Uh, this was this was one I splurged on. Uh, I have a, a love-hate relationship with retailer incentives, but I love the Russell Dodderman character iteration books. This is one of his most recent books. This is a 1 in 25 retailer incentive featuring all of the Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel costume iterations. And I ended up paying quite a bit to get this because I wanted to just make sure that I, I had a copy. I think there's also a character appearance in here. I don't know if that matters so much. Uh, kind of what I was saying before with the Wonder Woman 77, there is a little bit of color loss up here in the top corner, and I hesitated to just mark it as a 9.8, and I did think this was a good 9.8 pre-screen candidate. It was the only defect I could find on the book, and sure enough, uh, they did give it a pass. It uh, just just barely breaks color. Just I would kind of classify it as some very light bindery tearing, but it was not so significant to pull the book down into a 9.6, so... Uh, this is awesome. I'm going to add this to my collection of Dodderman character covers, and I really need to kind of display them and get these on a video someday because I think they're they're really cool to kind of see together. Next up is Ultimate Spider-Man number one, another copy of the design variant. This is a 1 in 10. I was able to get a couple of these and decided to send both of them in because I thought that they were in high grade and was right about that one. It was cheaper for me to get the two 1 in 10s than it was to get the 1 in 25. It's just very strange how these ratio books are priced and valued uh, and also how they lose value when they're slabbed and so forth. Uh, so I figured why not go ahead and acquire an additional 1 in 10 just to have that in my collection if uh, all the Ultimate Spider-Man number ones continue to go up in value. Our next is Superman number 10. This is the 1 in 25 Lyrics Lee Retailer Incentive. Another book I was able to pre-order featuring Marilyn Moonlight on the cover. Uh, to me, the two Superman books don't really scream Superman, but the characters uh, on the cover, the same sort of aesthetic and cover design as well. Uh, I just figured it would kind of lend itself to being difficult to keep in a 9.8 over time. So the combination of the character, the cover, the ratio incentive just felt like in the long run with uh, very well-known popular creators, Nathan Zerdy on Superman 9 and Leslie Lyrics Lee on Superman 10. To me, it was worth it to have those incentives with characters on the cover from popular creators. So just trying to explain or justify some of the logic that I used to select those books over some others for this pre-screen. Next is Wolverine number 40. Uh, this one probably really easy to explain, hopefully uh, quite obvious as well. Uh, Wolverine, Art Adams, Retailer Incentive. It's almost becoming automatic with a lot of these uh, more recent Art Adams ratios where they're all kind of being scooped up during pre-order, uh, getting some bumps in value on the secondary market. The latest is the one the Incredible Hulk Art Adams variant is popping. Love that one too. Yeah, I really like this this Wolverine cover. I think sometimes uh, the Art Adams variants featuring female characters are the ones that are more automatic in terms of the ones that I would pre-order and consider for grading, but I really like this Wolverine cover here, so decided to send this one in. All right, and the last one is another G.I. Joe. This is G.I. Joe 303. 
So I've talked about the G.I. Joe books, the Brad Walker 1 in 10s, collecting those and getting them graded, and now have, I think, uh, 301 through 305, all in a CGC 9.8. But just love his art style and uh, feel like those 1 in 10s are pretty easy to acquire. And also the paper quality on those Image Skybound books. They're kind of the matte material similar to a lot of the Boom Studios books, and I feel like those are a little bit easier to get the 9.8 on as opposed to like the, the typical like Marvel uh, super, I mean, that's barely paper, uh, but they're not, they, they're, they're not quite cardstock, but the paper quality on those just seems to be more well-suited to keeping in a high grade. All right, so those are the slabs. I wanna take a look at the rejects. I kinda lost count to see how many of those I went through. It did feel like I went through most of them, but let me go ahead and get this opened up. So you can see which books didn't make it and uh, kind of what was I thinking. It looks like there are two books in here. Oh man, I already know which one didn't get it. Uh, nope, one book, 17 out of 18. And this was one I was really hoping would get it, and uh, I'll have to examine it a little bit more closely. This was tough. This is the Silk Number no. 1 David Nakayama Ratio Variant, and really love this book. And uh, I thought it was a 9.8. CGC did not think so. Uh, I may have to send this, uh, either send it back in or take a look at it and see if it needs a press. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't see anything... It looks like a 9.8 to me. I may have to resubmit it. So that's too bad. Love this book anyway. I think it's a great book. I will take 17 9.8s out of 18 any day. But you can definitely see here all modern books. These are all books. I think the oldest one, maybe early 2020s, the House of Slaughter books, I believe from 2021 might be that. But you could basically classify them as ultra moderns and trying to move away from any of the newspaper books before the paper quality changed and really thinking about uh, the ultra modern books and reserving those for my pre-screen and making sure that any of the other books go through one of my other cues in terms of getting those pressed or cleaned up. And I feel like I have better luck with these ultra modern books. I, I still feel like my, my working theory is when there's a 9.8 pre-screen, there's a specific type of grader that gets those books as opposed to a book that is submitted through the standard or vintage tier. I, I'm guessing, I don't have evidence of this, but I think there are different graders because I also think uh, they have to work with different turnaround times too. And 9.8 is the easiest book to grade where you can just kind of go through quickly and say, yeah, I don't see any of the basic defects. It, it's, it is a pass, no pass grade. And I do feel like there's a different type of grader that is giving it a pass fail instead of assigning a specific grade. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about these books that I sent in for the pre-screen. Are you out there uh, sending books in for a pre-screen and getting 9.9s? I still haven't seen any, so I don't see CGC changing their standards anytime soon. You would think out of 17 books, I might get one or two if they really are changing the standards. So I think we're safe for now uh, and that 9.8s are going to be the more accessible tier for us collectors. Thanks for watching, happy collecting, and see you next time.